Strip everything down to image, word, idea. Without narrative, it means nothing. Henshin Inspection presents... Super Sentai Sanctuary! This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Find all my work at mjmunoz.com. I will be discussing what is the cost of being a hero, of not being a hero. Would you be willing to pay like Haruka did? This is Super Sentai Sanctuary episode 10. Cliché, but I like it. The uh, the 10th episode of Avatar Sentai Don Brothers, uh, The Rainbow the Oni Saw, was originally aired May 8th, 2022. The writer's Toshiki Inoue, the director is Ryuta Tasaki. The negative stuff is this. I'm just going to give one example from each category because I am short on time. Um, this is mostly filler. This is almost filler. That's what I really meant to say. You know what? No. <laughs> this is almost filler, and that's fine. Actually, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break my own rules. I'm going to add a second complaint here. Uh, Marina was supposed to uh, be the manga stalker. I didn't catch that until making these notes. Uh, is that the show's failing or mine? I don't know. She was clearly the new Oni sister, so I knew she wasn't the stalker, but Haruka didn't know that, so... Is that uh, dramatic irony? Is it clever writing? Uh, Inoue seems to sure like to play with what the audience knows versus what the character knows. I don't know that he does that to any effect, but there are things that he does where I have to... I get mad for a second and I think, oh wait, no, um, the character doesn't know that, but I do. So I guess that's why I was frustrated with them. But still, uh, is he trolling? I Probably. Anyway, uh, positive thing, uh, I absolutely... Uh, loved the uh, Team Robotaro change. Um, it was wild. I dig it. And uh, yeah, that, that's it, pretty much. Uh, for direction, let me see. I have a couple things to point out here from the direction that I liked. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there was a cool transition with the Gokaiger or pirate uh, Hitotsuki uh, going off into a door in the sky. The door slammed shut and AR cubes cascaded down from it. And then that cut to rain coming down on Haruka right before she entered the cafe to... Um, to meet with, uh, what's her face? Uh, <laughs> Marinara? No, that's not right. <laughs> her replacement. Anyway, um, by the way, according to the wiki, that lady was like a second runner up, or she was passed over to be, uh, to play Haruka, and then they brought her back for this role, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and I definitely felt very strong, like, oh, this lady could be a Yellow Ranger. Uh, she could be the replacement or she could be the next yellow ranger or whatever and i just thought that was kind of cool uh as far as writing is concerned uh oh this i gotta say haruka is such a person she gets to have an ugly side and i love it her sourness makes her positive turns all the more meaningful uh let's see next thing in general notes uh yeah i'll, I'll share that the beast Shield detectives uh fake teeth are hilarious and cool all at the same time it reminds me of old school tokusatsu like uh the people with the fangs in the uh I guess it's the second episode of Kamen Rider, the original, um, where they've got those goofy, like, tusk-like bat vampire fangs or whatever. It just reminds me of that. And honestly, the ones he had in his mouth, almost because of the way they moved, they look like those ones you would get as a kid with, like, the vampire fangs that you could stick in your mouth that are hinged. Anyway, that's kind of hilarious. So I, I dig that. Uh, so let's see. Going on to the reflections. So everything has a cost. That is an inescapable truth. And I want to know, what is the cost of being a hero? What is the cost of not being a hero? And can you bear to pay that cost? And uh, Haruka struggles with that. And, you know, so do you do to a certain extent. Um, so I like that we got this alternate world peak, uh, this alternate world glimpse. And really, this is not the first time we've had this sort of thing in the show when... Uh, my boy Tsuyoshi traded in his Kiwi points to be uh, a real macho man, <laughs> which is uh, complicated. Anyway, when he traded in his points to become a real macho man uh, to try to impress his wife, one, it didn't impress his wife. She got sick. I w hmm. Wow. Okay, I never. I was going to ask, is her getting sick having to, anything to do with her dual identity and being attached to uh, Inazami? Or is that what his name is? Whatever. Dog dude. Anyway. Inazaki. Anyway, I, I just find that very curious. Um, but, so this is the second time we've seen a Don brother use their Kiji points for, to do something. In this instance, her request was so big that it made, it like completely altered reality and made everybody forget that she was part of their team and make them instead think that it was this other lady who was part of their team. And because their personalities are different, uh, there was like a whole different way of being that she had with the team and a whole different type of relationship she had. Also, did you notice that her fingernail pink or paint was pink and yellow? Almost to say like she's the girl ranger 
um, but she's the yellow, but she's replacing, so there's something false about her yellow. I, I, very interesting. I did not notice at the end when she received the award for the uh, photography if she had all pink nails or if they were pink and yellow still. Uh, gosh, that would be super interesting. It's like a really cool visual detail. Um, but anyway, uh, I am running short on time, so I'll go ahead. You know what? What does it cost to be a hero? It costs giving up everything else uh, to the exclusion of that moment of heroism. And if you keep being a hero for the rest of your life, that's what it costs to you. It, it means you have to keep giving up chances to be self selfish uh, and keep yourself safe to put yourself in danger and be selfless to the uh, benefit and blessing of... Uh, and salvation of others. And what does it mean to not be a hero? I mean, it kind of means the opposite. It means that every time you can choose to be noble and to be brave and to be strong and to help others, you instead choose to turn away, turn a blind eye, and uh, turn towards your own self-interest. And the life of a hero may be more fulfilling, despite it being full of sacrifices, and the life of a non-hero might be uh, less satisfying or it, it satisfies you in one way. It satisfies the flesh, so to speak. Oh, gosh, I'm getting all religious here. Uh, but it doesn't satisfy your soul. Um, but some people don't get to live with their soul satisfied, I guess, if uh, if they choose not to do that. So, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Um, and, I mean, it's a legitimate question. Can you bear that cost? Can you handle to make this decision instead of that decision? Uh, but the thing is, it's not a binary choice. It's not, I'm going to be a hero or a villain. Because you can choose to be hero, villain, evil, good, in almost any situation and it just comes down to you what comes naturally to you what do you choose to do those are two different things uh but honestly you can only ever make one choice and you can't go back and make the other choice and you can't know what that's like of course in fiction we get to do those sorts of things which is exactly what happened here so that's pretty cool um next episode is called as sick as a dog and i just love the punniness of that title that's a lot of fun i'm gonna give this episode a nine out of ten it was so good, I couldn't even take proper notes. I had to go back, like, I tried to, the first couple episodes I was able to watch and take notes without, like, even pausing, really, and I was just able to jump back and forth, but, man, ah, uh, not this time, not this time, um, so anyway, this is the kind of introspective stuff I like in my stories. Uh, Haruka is a neat character. She's a bit prickly, but she doesn't have the heart to let someone else suffer in her place. She's becoming a true hero. That's everything I want. The Team Robotaro change was a lot of fun, and the Oni Robotaro suit looks amazing. Steak, sizzle, and spice, this episode really had everything for me. So uh, this episode, uh, I will focus on how Inoue and Tasaki did a great job playing with this old idea and making it feel new, and that's my creator spotlight for, uh, well, for this episode. So... Uh, let's talk about tropes and cliches real quick because I need to kind of clear something up before uh, I move forward. So, excuse me. Uh, okay. Been a long day having my second cup of coffee and enjoying the heck out of it. So, uh, let's see. So, as far as tropes are concerned, uh, several times I have erroneously claimed a trope was a fresh take on something in a genre and lamented that it had become, or that it had come to mean, a stale convention of the genre which has fallen from grace after shining so brightly so long ago. I was wrong. A trope is a feature, not a bug. It seems literary and film tropes have indeed developed over time in each genre, yes, but that doesn't mean they have all become, or are, all in and of themselves, cliches. So... I find that very interesting. Uh, I have some links here uh, in the show notes that you can look at to find out exactly what I'm talking about, and you can look at uh, examples given uh, in the wiki. Um, the etymology of the words are interesting, too. I, I share them here as well. Um, and I'll go right into uh, cliché. So a cliché is a phrase or idea that is uh, played out. Uh, Harka sort of laughs at herself about Marina's uh, love of rainbows because, of course, a photographer, one who captures light, would love rainbows, which are made of light. It's too perfect. The concept being played with here is a trope as well. And by the concept, I mean this whole, you know, switching alternate life type of thing. I can't pin down the genre that it belongs to, but Dickens uh, used this glimpse of an alternate life in A Christmas Carol with the uh, ghost of Christmas future, past, whatever. Uh, um, he used that to bring Scrooge to a newfound appreciation for his lot in life and a new attitude. Something like this happens in it's a Wonderful Life. Both are Christmas stories, and the film is based off a radio play. I don't know if that radio play is sort of based off of A Christmas Carol or not. I can't quite tell. Um, anyway, I can't think of other examples, but A Christmas Carol has been homaged in much media to tell the same story, basically. This episode avoids being a cliché by altering the structure while using the same basic idea. I will argue that something is cliché when it uses tropes and adds nothing to them. It isn't 
enough to have the elements assembled. They need to be put together with craft and style to work. I think Inoue uh, does that here. Tasaki sure helps with the sensational action. So that's my creative spotlight. Uh, didn't have time to look up a particular suit actor or anybody like that, but just the way this episode was put together really did make me think, these guys did a freaking good job making this thing cool instead of being lame. So anyway, you can also look up the etymology of cliche if you want to. Again, I have all my sources linked in the, uh, in the document, in the show notes. So go ahead and check those out. And I think I have a little bit more to say. Well, I don't have much else to say except for uh, it feels a little strange doing such a short analysis of this episode. Um, I think it was thoughtful. I don't think I needed to share all my stray comments. And again, you can see them at mgmunis.com uh, in the show notes of the video that I posted this on or whatever. So, um, I mean, I guess that's fine. Uh, let me know if you like the shorter length or if I should keep it longer. Maybe I'll try do I'll do two more weeks. I'll do episode uh, 11 and 12 short as well to see how I like doing that. And I might just try to keep them to around uh, 10 minutes as opposed to closer to 20 minutes. So uh, even closer to 30 as some of them went. So anyway, um, that's about it. Check out mjmunis.com. I have the author, analyzer, and artist tab. Uh, I'm slowly releasing uh, posts about my uh, Holy Heroes project that I'm uh, planning a, uh, well, which is me planning, making a business plan for and making a like writing plan outline Bible for myself uh, to have an entire universe of superheroes um, first written in a book format and then expanding out, God willing, with success to uh, comic books, which I, comics are expensive to make, man. Um, I honestly think for a 22 page, you could spend like 5,000 bucks on that easily. And I don't know if I'd want to do monthly floppies or I probably would, would want to do monthly floppies and then maybe do a big annual or something. And I, I don't know, but I have, I have lots of ideas. I have lots of plans, but uh, I want to flesh out the universe in my books so I get the stories right so I can make the best comics possible because uh, it's kind of just me doing it by myself as far as the writing direction and like editorial or whatever. And I would just be hiring artists. So I don't know. I got to I gotta figure something out. But anyway, um, check out that stuff hopefully uh so some of the holy hero stuff is up there hopefully i'll get up, i don't know one every couple weeks up there either uh part of the writing plan business plan and, or one of the uh the videos of the character designs i'm making as i'm going through um because well i am an artist and i love the act of uh making characters and designing them and uh, just drawing feels so good like it's it's a relief when i get to draw after not having drawn for a while so anyway uh, check that out that stuff uh also check out the tiktok for um more content i'll go into and uh actually you know what you can check out the show notes but you can also check out the tiktok where i'm going to have uh you know one to three minute videos talking about various things well the worst thing the best thing and the thing that got me thinking the most out of uh, each and every episode of don brothers uh <laughs> time permitting anyway anyway so uh that's it this is mj signing off i leave you with peace and blessings